Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Thursday, the 28th of March. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined this morning by Chris Jack. How's it going, Chris? Not bad, Derek. Not too bad. Yourself, how's things? Funky Dory, another day closer to uh, Rangers being back in action. Uh, this international break seems to have gone on forever, as they normally do. Uh, it used to be just uh, a week, I think it was. Now it's, uh, it feels like full-blown three months until uh, the domestic action starts. But yeah, looking forward to it very much. Uh, Hibs, of course, coming to Ibrox on Saturday afternoon. Before we dive into all the Rangers news, uh, folks, just a quick word for our podcast sponsors, the mphboilers.co.uk. Go and head over and check them out if that is something you're thinking of. They've got some great home improvement deals on offer just now. The all-important links are in the description below as always. Um, right, news that I woke up to the, this morning, Chris, uh, our daily, uh, whenever we're on, we seem to talk about John Lundstrom in great detail, but uh, I noticed this morning that Trabzonspor, of course, uh, it looks like Borna Barisic will be heading there in the summertime. They are now also keen, according to a report in Turkey, uh, at securing John Lundstrom. We know he's out of contract in the summer. As yet, at time of recording, he's yet to pen uh, an extension to his deal. We know the club were keen on him extending that stay. Uh, and John Lundstrom, obviously, uh, quite rightly, um, looking out for the best deal for him as well. And Rangers and the player yet to come to a happy medium. Um, but this is the first time I've heard of another club interested in taking him away. Uh, I would be surprised, I've got to say, if John Lundstrom elects to head out to Trabzonspor. That being said, I'd imagine they'll be able to pay a pretty penny out there in Turkey. But um, what do you make of this news, Chris? Um, it's one of, as I like yourself, I woke up this morning and saw the saw the stories from the reports in Turkey. I have checked it out. I have messaged someone uh, this morning about it. So if the phone goes in the next uh, 20 minutes or so, well, we're, well we're on air. Hopefully we'll have some Sky Sports News style breaking news and you can get the, you can get the yellow banner out. If not, um, I'll keep on the case over the course of the day, obviously, and try and, um, try and see if there's anything in this one. Um, personally, I would be surprised, but who knows? It's, it's football after all. Um, we didn't see Ryan Kent uh, going out to Turkey, um, and that ultimately happened. I don't think it's, it's worked out that well for him. Um, I would be surprised if, if Lundstrom thought that was the, the best move for him at this stage of his, of his career. I think for any player in that in that situation, certainly at his age, you've got the decision to make. Do you want to stay and try and win both trophies, play European football, or do you see it as you've maybe got three, four, five years left in, in the tank, go and try and maximise your earning potential? If you want to maximise your earning potential, you don't stay at Rangers. And that's not to say that he's not on a good wage at Rangers. That's not to yeah. say that he's not picking up thousands of pounds every week for playing playing in a good team in front of great fans for a great club. There's a lot to like about being at Rangers. Um, I, I would imagine an offer from Turkey would be more lucrative um, financially than what Rangers would, would put on the table. Um, so I think it, if, if this is a serious option, and then comes down to joining how he how he sees it. But um, so I, I'd be surprised if he thought Turkey was the best best option for him at this, at this stage. From a Rangers perspective, I think it's been clear for the last few weeks. We said a few weeks ago the club were committed to uh, tying him down on a on a contract. They want him to stay. The manager wants him to stay. The manager's spoken really positively about the impact he's had both on and off the field um, as a, a key part of of that midfield, a key member of the of the squad in terms of our dressing room influence. So the manager clearly wants some club want to hold on to him. I think most of the fans. Now we've spoken about Lundstrom a number of times over the last two, three, four months. Um, I don't think I'm overstretching it by saying most of the fans would be happy if he stayed. I'm going with the comments that we see and people um, coming onto the channel, they seem happy with Lundstrom, would happy if he signed a new deal, as long as it was on the right terms. That's not to say you go and hand out four-year contracts on, on big money. Mm -hmm. I think if it was suitable for the club, I think the vast majority of people would be happy to see him, um, would be happy to see him stay on. Um, but ultimately, it comes down to what both parties want from the want from the deal. If it suits both sides of it, it will happen. If it doesn't, Rangers will have to move on and John Lundstrom will move on and they'll both watch each other uh, well at the end of it. So, um, as I said on was it Monday we were speaking about this or Tuesday, um, I think that's, it's, it's an issue. It's something that has to be has to be resolved. It's something in the manager's um, to-do list at present. 
right now for me is not the most pressing thing. There's many, many more um, pressing issues for, for Clermont to deal with over the next couple of weeks than John Lundstrom's uh, own, own situation. So it will get sorted one way or the other. Um, I say if I get any update, well, we're, we're on air. Um, ho- hopefully I can bring some breaking news, but it, it depends on the phone beeping. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll chase it up, folks, and see uh, if there's anything in it. Uh, lots of comments come in just off the back of that. Uh, differing viewpoints. It is what it is, says uh, Lundstrom is on a healthy wage. Let him go. Uh, Blue Eyed Boy says, uh, can't see Lundstrom leaving Rangers uh, for Turkey. Uh, CGM 55, be an interesting point. I would not be overly depressed if Lundstrom left. I like him, but he has had moments where he's been really poor. He's a big earner and not getting any younger. He had just turned 30 in February. Uh, William White with a point says uh, another player could have made a few pounds on. Uh, and uh, yeah, the Dana Life uh, says as well, do you think he will stay, lads? Uh, it would surprise me if he was to go to Chubbs on Sport. Um, that being said, as I just mentioned there, I think if he is getting paid handsomely over there, I can't uh, begrudge him a move uh, as a short career as a footballer. I know he has said he's loves uh, love like loves life at, in Glasgow and playing uh, for Rangers. Uh, and uh, but listen, he has to look out for himself and, and his family. Uh, if he's not happy with uh, the contract offer on the table from Rangers, then he's well within his rights to look for uh, a better deal elsewhere. Uh, just played out there in Turkey. You mentioned there Ryan Kent, Chris. He's had a bit of a nightmare over there. Uh, other players have went over there, Rangers players, and found it tough. Uh, I'm going way back to Chris Boyd went over there. Kenny Miller went over there. Uh, Alan McGregor went over there for a time uh, as well. Um, generally, when you go over there, you don't necessarily... Uh, enjoy your fo- enjoy your football and stay out there for a long period of time necessarily. So, uh, listen, would you be surprised if the if there were other clubs maybe sniffing about Lundstrom now, given that the form he's in, he's become a, a mainstay of that Rangers midfield. He's one of Philip Clement's go to men at this moment in time. I think at, at this stage of the season, I'd be surprised if there's a whole host of clubs lining up looking to speak to John and his representatives and start putting offers on the table. Um, I think when you look at Kent and Morelos last season, slightly different situation, different profile of players. Uh, mostly from a Rangers perspective, there's a lot more money lost in both those in both those situations. Lundstrom's not a guy that you're ever going to make five, six million pounds on. Um, and if he does leave for for free, you send him on a Bosman, you lose him on a Bosman. I think he's been good value, even even at, at a yeah. high age. Um, I think he has been good value over the over the piece of his Rangers career. So it's not. It wouldn't be as sore a blow, if you like, for Rangers to lose Lundstrom on, on a free if he was still on the contract for two seasons and there's a bit of championship interest. You pick up a couple of million pounds for him, not in the same same levels. Um, I, say, I, I would think um, if he is going to move on, going back down south seems seems more likely um, r- rather than going to Turkey. But I say we didn't we didn't see it with Ryan Kent. We've seen it with other players as as he mentioned. Turkey always seems a, a surprising move for me. Uh, I can, I think it's probably the, as I said a few weeks ago, it's probably the type of move I can see Barisic making. Lundstrom, yeah. be surprised, also a young family. Do you want to then go out there? Yeah, he's, he's probably going to settle back, back down south at, at some point. Um, so I'm not not convinced that would be the right move for him. If he wants to go for it, by all means, I say, I think everyone would, it would wish him well if he, if he moved on. Um, but for me, Turkey wouldn't be the, I think that the options would be you stay at Rangers and you try and win some trophies, play more European football, and you then have a, a bit more of a Rangers legacy, or you go back down south, you pick up a few more um, pounds per week, um, and that's where you then retire and you then move into coaching, managing, media mm-hmm. side, whatever else he sees himself doing after the after he hangs up his boots. Um, so I think that looks to me like the two most obvious obvious routes, but I say it's, it's football, so you can never, never rule anything in or out. No, no, you certainly cannot. Uh, just looking at how they're getting on in, in the uh, Turkish league at this moment in time, they're third, but they're 30 points off second. Uh, Galatasaray leading the way, two points ahead of uh, Fenerbahce. Uh, Traps on spore in third place at this uh, moment in time. But uh, yeah, it certainly looks like uh, Barisic will be playing his football over there next summer. Uh, whether John Lundstrom does uh, as well uh, remains to be seen. Uh, just to wrap up with a couple of comments just on that. Uh, Jim says, uh, get Lundstrom signed up. He's been a mainstay of our side in the last few months. It would cost millions uh, to replace him. Um, I think this, uh, if he was to go, do you think there's uh, potential replacements already in the building there, Chris? I mean, Dujon Sterling has shown that he can play in that 
midfield role. Uh, that Mohamed Diamandi has come in and, and uh, it has looked leggy, to be fair, in the last uh, couple of games, but he, he's certainly impressed since uh, coming in. I'd imagine Rangers will try and look to bring in uh, one, maybe two more in that midfield area in the summertime, whether Lundstrom stays or goes. I think uh, Ryan Jack will be moving on. Nico Raskin, jury's out for me on him, but he uh, can step up to the plate. Um, but do you think it may cost Rangers a, a fair few uh, a fair few bit of, uh, pounds to bring in a replacement? I think the the makeup of that midfield next season is going to be really interesting. Because uh, you look at Neil Mandios to come in, as you say, I've been really impressed with him. You can see what he's got. You can see why the club have committed to the uh, to the money for him. So nine times out of ten, you'd imagine he's got one of those midfield berths. Mm-hmm. What it looks like round about him, um, I think it's still very much up for debate. To John Sterling, I think we've all been hugely impressed with in a, in a midfield uh, role over the over his last few months, so he's definitely in the mix. Raskin, as you say, I think the jury's out for me. I, I think the if he was someone who you could get your money back on and try and reinvest it in a different way, I don't think many fans would be would be that upset at that. Um, Ryan Jack, I think a lot of people have made their minds up that we're now in the final weeks of his Rangers career and he won't be offered a deal. And you're then looking at is the academy something that you're looking at Bailey Rice, you're looking at Cole McKinnon, are these guys ready to be first team regulars? Probably not. Can they be in a squad? Probably yes. So there's I think that we've been short of midfield options at, at times over the over the course of the season. If you lay everyone out and say fit, firing, good to go, how many of them actually are nailed on? Deal Mandy, yes, Lundstrom, yeah. yes. Apart from that, no, that's before we even mention someone like Kieran Dill, who I think again we've all but we've all, all, all but written off and all, all but forgotten about. Um, I think it probably speaks volumes as we are rhyming off midfielders uh, <laughs> until the end of the end of the conversation to bring him into it. So there's there, there are a lot of midfielders there. How many of them do you say we can rely on you week in, week out? You're going to be a key part of that midfield. Right now, for me, it's Lundstrom, Sterling, and Deal Mandy. That's clearly not enough to get you through. Um, to get through another European campaign, another domestic campaign, there will have to be movement in that area of the, of the pitch. It's then, do you try and replace Raskin like for like? Do you try and replace Ryan Jack like for like? Um, I said, do you bring some of the kids in? So it's going to be a busy summer transfer window, I think, for Rangers. The manager has done a remarkable job to get the squad into the position that it is in and to achieve what he has achieved so far. Um, but even if Rangers go on and win the league, even if they, if they, they go on and win the treble, that's not to say that there are no issues within the squad and it's good to go. You add one or two and you go again. I think the squad will have a big, a big reshape over the over the course of the summer. Um, that's not to say we go and spend twenty million like we did last season because that's also a big, a big um, chunk out of whatever budget was there. Um, and another asking the investors and asking the club to dig deep and go again. It might not be at that level. You might need to see some guys leave. You're obviously, you're looking at Lammers potentially leaving. There'll be discussions over Dessers. There'll be discussions over a, num- a number of guys in the squad. We can either save wages or you can um, save wages and recoup transfer fees. And it's then about how the manager and Neil Scorpion look to look to use that um, and how they how they decide what are the priority positions. Um, I think we spoke a couple of weeks ago about priority positions, but we're both aligned on. You're looking at like six or so and that's just, that's just for starters so the, the midfield I think will get a bit of a an overhaul uh, come the summer we will see players move on um, and Lundstrom I think is, is key to that because it's such an important part of the such an important part of the side not just because he's he's playing the game and he's robust and he's reliable a big voice in the, in, in the dressing room a big part of how the how the manager sets the side up and if it's not going to be John Lundstrom, you have to have a quality replacement in there. It's not a case of, well, we've got somebody, it'll do. You're going to have to either spend a fee on them or do a really good bit of Bosman work or do a or do a an exciting loan deal to get someone in because it's such an important part of how the of how that uh, club outside uh, actually operates. Yep. Um, good points that you raise there, uh, Chris. Uh, Andrew Hunter with a point as well. He says, uh, lots of transfer gossip going on with the team just now. Hopefully it doesn't derail our season. I don't think it will. I think the team are very much focused on the final league games of the season as well as the Scottish Cup. Um, and let's hope they get back to uh, winning weight to start to kick off with a win against uh, Hibs at Ibrox uh, this coming Saturday. It ties us in. Other transfer gossip, uh, well, not transfer gossip, but we've seen uh, Derek Ferguson speaking 
about uh, Scott Wright as well in the news. You may have seen uh, this morning uh, his long-term future, uh, Ferguson says, uh, will be elsewhere. He says that he's failed to take his chance to shine. He says uh, on his Benfica performance, he says that it was a strong performance. I think, Scott, for me, has been better coming off the bench. But with uh, the injury crisis, if you want to call it that, uh, Rangers at the moment, the manager had no other option to play him. He's always one of these players where you think uh, that he's capable of producing the goods at that level. And at times in the game, he did do that. But the overall package, I don't think he's done himself any favours over the course of the last four or five seasons. And he added that he doesn't think He's got a big future at Rangers. Uh, ironically, he could have been playing in Turkey this season, Chris. Uh, he was on. He went over there a couple of times to negotiate with uh, a club at the bottom end of the table, Pendik Spor, but he decided against moving out there. He just seems to be immune uh, to leaving Rangers. I think he's here uh, until at the end of time, Scott Wright. But uh, yeah, he's another one. Uh, we all know his limitations, of course. He has contributed as a squad player over the course of uh, of those past uh, four or five seasons since he's been at the club. But uh, simply put, Rangers need better in the summer. Squad player sums him up. And I, I don't think that's been too too unkind. I've been too unfair on, on Scott. Um, I think he is, ultimately, he just is what he is. He's a player of a certain level. Is he a starter and a really successful Rangers side? No. Is he a good option to have at times? Yes, but I think those those times have are becoming more and more more and more fleeting. I think as as your squad evolves, that's again that that wide right uh, position is definitely one that Rangers will look to will look to strengthen again come the uh, come the summer. Um, and also in that conversation, you've got the Sima situation, you've got the Cortez situation, um, you've got the Matondo situation. So there's a right he ticks he ticks a box in terms of the UEFA uh, match list as well. That's a that's something a, a consideration Rangers still have to have. You do need to have that that Scottish core, that Scottish quota within the squad. I think he's probably benefited from that in terms of he's he's got more, more game time. He's perhaps had more opportunities um, than he would have had if he if he wasn't Scottish. Maybe even have been maybe moved on from the club before now. Um, but I think it's it's he's he, he, he he's one of these players who he contributes, but just not at a high enough level and just not often enough for me. So I think it's, um, again, if he does move on, people say he's been here for some great times. He's been here for some, for some memorable seasons, been here for some bad seasons and, and some bad times. Overall, I think he's he should be more than happy with what he's achieved in his Ed Rangers career. He'll move on. He'll go and play regularly somewhere more than good enough to go to another club in this in this league or go down maybe League One, bottom end of the championship and play and play regular uh, first team football, regular match action. It's just not going to come his. It's not going to come his way at Ibrox next season. You would think. Yeah, uh, Timothy Sharp not happy with the topic of discussion. He says, "Why are we talking about players leaving? We've got important games to be played. It's poor subject to be discussing." Uh, sorry, Timothy. Uh, it's just uh, the news that we've seen uh, this morning. But we shall move on. Let's talk about. Uh, uh, one player that is in the Rangers Review website uh, this morning, and it's uh, Joshua's great piece on serial Dessers, Chris. Uh, I've not, I don't think I've seen a Rangers player that's uh, uh, came in for uh, so much criticism uh, as he has, and he's uh, produced numbers that Joshua has uh, popped up on the website, which I'm going to read to you uh, shortly. He's uh, scored 16 goals and he's got seven assists so far. Uh, he has the best uh, goal per 90 in the Scottish Premiership since uh, Philip Clement's arrival at the club. It's 0.8 goals, uh, and that is ahead of nearest competitor Lauren Shankland at 0.71, uh, who has 12 league goals in 1990 minutes since, since the start of the season. Uh, it's a great piece there on the website, Chris. Uh, that being said, uh, I know the stats are the stats. Uh, <laughs> I'm going with the eye test at this moment in time, though, uh, and uh, I'm not convinced uh, at him leading the line for the final uh, league games of the season. I've said it before, I have concerns, not only this coming Saturday, but more so the old firm game approaching at Ibrox a week on Sunday. Uh, we cannot afford him fluffing his lines if he's played through on goal or chances are presented to him. Um, do you read too much into the stats? I mean, he is uh, producing, uh, but uh, do we need more from him? 
lies, damned lies, and statistics. I believe <laughs> uh, George <laughs> got put into on that one. Um, no, I, I, it's actually an interesting piece of people to go and get a look at it because it does provide a bit more context on on Dessers, uh, his, certainly his form under under uh, the manager. It has been better, but it could have been so much better. I think his uh, his international exploits over the last few days probably sum him up. No, he scores his penalty, good for confidence. You'd like to think gets a chance in the next game through one-on-one and, of course, he doesn't score it. Um, the only surprise with the penalty was he didn't try and chop back onto his, his other foot and then hit it. Um, so, that's he's, he is, again, he is, he is what he is. Now, how, how many hours have we spent talking about him over the course of the over the course of the season so far? He's, he's there. He's reliable in terms of um, fitness. He's reliable in terms of you know, all, all, always turning up you know he's going to be a, a big part of, of the squad because the options just aren't there. Otherwise, um, yeah. like Josh had, had a piece on, on the site last week about uh, Kamar Roof and why you see him as a finisher in games rather than a starter in games. And you have to agree with that because you just can't, you just don't know what you're going to get out of Roof fitness-wise. I mean, you only have Dessers and Silva. You have to be very careful with how you're managing them. And also Silva's had to play wide left due to other injury situations within the within the squad. So Dessers for me is a likable big guy. I think he, he gets it. I think he, he understands what the club's all about. But the missed chances, the they just they, they add up and they add up. The old firm game uh, at Park Ed like always always springs to mind. And it's like you said there, Derek, we come to the Celtic game next next week. If you have one chance to win the game, to potentially open up a gap at the top of the table, is Dessers the man that you want on the end of that chance? He's just not. And that's not saying it as like a snap reaction. There's a, a pattern of, of misses over the course of the season that shows he's just not that reliable. He's not reliable enough, often enough, in those in those situations. Um, now, as his form under on, on Clement has been, has been better. Could it have been a lot better than that? Yes, it could be. But I think that just is where he is. He is just a striker who misses a lot of chances, scores some, scores some good ones. Some of the goals he has scored this season have been really, really accomplished finishes. I mean, you then see him missing sitters and just doing things. You're like, well, how, how is that? For a guy who's capable of one thing, like scoring in Betis, how are you then capable of the others where you're missing open goals and you're, so you're chopping and you're changing and you're not getting shots away? Um, if he can score, what, five times between now and the end of the season, I think that takes him to a fairly decent tally over the over the course. But I say it should have been so much better. Any Rangers striker should be hitting those type of numbers. It should really be hitting better numbers because the chances are there game after game after game. Um, and unfortunately he, he seems to miss he seems to miss more than um he seems to miss more than he converts. Yeah, it just shows you the amount of chances that Rangers are creating, uh, but there's uh, no doubt about it. Uh, the club need to go and get a prolific number nine in the summertime. I've said it before, I think they need two out-and-out strikers uh, in the summer. Uh, Kimar Roof will be departing. Uh, Serial Dessers, uh, I think it, likelihood is that he may be moving on uh, as well. He doesn't tend to stay at clubs uh, that long, so uh, if Rangers can get... Uh, their money back for him. I, I think I'd be uh, shaking his hand and wishing him well on his future endeavours. But he may end up a treble winner. That is a, the, the beauty of it. But I'd urge you to go and check out that that piece, folks. Uh, a very interesting stuff indeed. Uh, I think his miss against uh, Mali for Nigeria summed him up uh, recently, uh, just a couple of days ago when he was played through on goal and he blazed it over the bar. Uh, as a comment came in uh, a few moments ago, if he's got time to think, uh, he generally struggles. But um, if, if he's not got time to uh, think about what he's doing, I think that is when he's at his best. John Stewart with the point says uh, Dessa should have 30 goals by now. He's an honest player but can't be trusted is what he says uh, on that one. Uh, there was a comment as well that came in. Uh, I started, I can't for the life of me uh, find it now, uh, asking when is Seema due back? Uh, we touched on this earlier in the week. Uh, I think um, there is a hope that he may be back in contention for the old firm game. I don't think you'll be starting that game. I may be wrong. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how uh, match fit he is. Uh, of course, he's been working on his rehab. Uh, he will miss this game this weekend. But uh, that will be a, a big boost, Chris, just to have him back uh, from the Celtic game onwards, if that is the case, um, because he is someone, uh, don't get me wrong, he is uh, partial to a miss or to himself, but he is someone uh, that is just, looks more threatening up in that, that final third area. 
I think he's just been on such a huge miss over these last few weeks, um, and not just because we've also been out, been without like Samatondo on the other side. Also, uh, had a Cortez come in and then fall out the squad through injury. Seema, he just provided a level of goal and assist in, in, in that purple patch earlier in the season that nobody else in this in the attacking area of the of a team could match. So having having him available um, over these last few weeks, it could just be a difference for uh, for Rangers. It could make such a huge difference uh, to the side. Uh, frees up Silva to then play through the middle, who I think is a more reliable finisher than uh, than Dessers in those in those big moments. Um, good to see that he's got a couple of goals for the. Portuguese twenty uh, ones this week as well, so yep. hopefully he's hopefully he's coming back um, in good form, good fitness, and in, and in fine fettle. Um, Seema, I'm sure, will be one of the names that comes up at the press conference uh, tomorrow at lunchtime. Um, also alongside Yelmaz and a couple of other injured guys. If I think the manager's been quite low key on Seema in the last few weeks, I, don't, I think he's tried to not raise expectations too much, um, but he has said like he's he's on the same he's on. On schedule, he's on the time scales that were initially put out, so that puts him in line for a return round about now or over the next over the next couple of games. Um, even if he's, even if he's not anywhere near a hundred percent fit, mm. just have him on the bench for the Celtic game. See if you need him, and he can give you fifteen minutes at the end with with that pace, with that direct style, with that eye for goal. He could be an integral part of the of the squad, even if as he is only 10, 15 minutes at the end, you then try and build him back up. We've seen the manager over over the course of his of his tenure so far, he doesn't throw players straight in the deep end unless he really, really has to. Um he's going to try and be careful with Seema. He needs him for the closing weeks, ideally for a, a Scottish Cup semi, ideally for a Scottish Cup final, hopefully, last couple of league games, there's no point in Rushing him in, throwing him in against Celtic, and he and he breaks down, and that's his that's his season done. So as much as everyone wants him back, it'd be great to see him back. I think it makes such a huge difference to the to the side if it means he only gets fifteen minutes, and then he only gets half an hour, and then he only gets an hour. In the long term, if it gets him fit for those defining couple of games, the last old firm game perhaps, certainly the, the games in the Scottish Cup, if it gets him fit and firing for then. Ultimately, that's more important than, than rushing them back for for Hibs or for Celtic or for Ross County. Yep, uh, yeah, uh, we need to keep these guys fit and to be able to contribute between now and the end of the season. Uh, just to address this, Stephen Life says, how do you get on the website, Derek? Uh, RangersReview.co.uk uh, is uh, the website address, uh, buddy. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, you can see the ticker below, uh, RangersReview.co.uk forward slash subscribe uh, to sign up. Two great offers on just now, £4 for four months or £18 for an entire year. Uh, and uh, you mentioned the Red fan, uh, Chris, uh, when I was on with Joshua yesterday, we discussed, of course, he's going to miss the Hibs game. Uh, it, like hopefully he'll be back in contention like Seema uh, for that Celtic game. Um, but Joshua uh, would said to me he would uh, be inclined to play Dujon Sterling uh, at left back in Ridvan's absence. Uh, I'm going Borna. Where do you stand on that? That's because Josh is president of the bon- Borna Barisic. Uh, I'm not a fan fan club. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, I think Josh is uh, he, he's, he's very much on the on the Redvan train, um, and he's, he's he's fallen out of love with Borna over these over the last <laughs> few months. Now, for me, I think if 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 Redvan's not going to not going to make it, like we uh, like we assume it wouldn't this weekend. Um, for me, Barisic coming back in and he, he plays against Hibs going forward. It's it's not ideal. Um, I say. I think Yelmaz has been the has been one of the stars of the show over these last few months. That that left back that left back berth is definitely his. Um, if everyone is fit, as we said earlier on in, in the week, it's just a, such another huge blow for Rangers at a time when they just can't afford it. So fingers crossed, it, it's not as it's not as bad as initially feared. Again, it's, it's a question that also the, the manager will face uh, will face tomorrow at, at his presser. Um, so I think Barisic comes in. He he plays in there. Um, and then hopefully you're then looking to Celtic, looking to the Scottish Cup game, looking to the last uh, games after the split. If you can get Red Van fit for them, I think that's that's probably your best uh, probably your best option. Um I know we, we did see a few weeks ago people were saying tear up Bonner's contract and he'll never play for us again and let's just release him now. Mm-hmm. I think we both said like he will have a part to play, either through form or through fitness. He will have a part to play. Um and I would be not Delighted at the fact that he's coming in and playing left backs. I think I think Yelmaz is the is the better option. But 
Burnley has been over the course of distance. I know he has had a difficult season, but I think he, I think he's the the obvious choice to come in and play it and play it left back. Sterling, um, as I think he's he will be needed further forward. I'd be more than happy to see Sterling play more games in midfield and play left back. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. We'll uh, wrap up. Dana Life says he's just subscribed uh, to the website since the start. Good to hear that, buddy. Thank you very much for your support. And this is what it's all about. Dag says, uh, "Morning from Poland, coming back home tomorrow to support the famous at Ibrox. Uh, cannot wait to get their proper football back underway. Uh, I won't be on uh, tomorrow, Chris. Uh, I'm off. Uh, so I'll get a, a score prediction from you. What? How do you think it's going to unfold on Saturday? Rangers uh, blowing away Hibs." Uh, hopefully it would be nice it would be a lovely way to um, to come back in after this international break which I've more endured than enjoyed it has to be said yeah. um, I would take I would take anything if it's 1-0 and it comes off Dessers backside then I'll take take it all day long um, but I think a, a fairly not not comfortable um, but I'm, I'm expecting a, a good level of performance from Rangers definitely a win so I'll go I'll go for 2-0 Yep, happily take that. Uh, Dessers hat trick incoming. Uh, make us eat our words, uh, big man. Okay, that will do us there. Huge thanks to Chris uh, as ever. Uh, huge thanks to everyone for interacting with the show uh, as always as well. It will be, I think it's uh, Joshua. Uh, I think, are you on tomorrow again, uh, Chris? I think Stevie's only, on, I think. I've only just found that you're not on, so there's a bit <laughs> chance I'm, 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 I'm going to get a call off the bench here. <laughs> well, surprise, there you go. Uh, yeah, so uh, tune in tomorrow, folks, as uh, we'll look ahead to that game on Saturday, of course, as Chris said as well. It's press conference day tomorrow as well. We'll hear from the manager and whatever player Rangers put up for the press, right? Until I speak to you again, hopefully your team wins at the weekend. Uh, I'll speak to you again on Monday. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Bye for now.